Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to a Just Nuts rant. I need to get this off my chest. This is something that has bothered me before, but Konami keeps poking my dang buttons. So I want to talk about this because I, I just, I need to get it out. I need to, I need to say it. I need to hear what other people think. I need to get this out of me. Okay. So let's get talking. First off, Duelist Pack, Duelist of Brilliance. Pretty cool pack in my opinion. Like, um, the Trickstar support's a little underwhelming, but like Tachyon's just a full-on playable deck, and the ABC, the Union deck, the ABC XYZ deck, is now like a solid rogue deck again, probably. Maybe even better. We'll see. For both of those. Um, but here's my bigger problem here. My bigger problem here is the new ABC cards. Not in that they're not cool, because I actually like the deck. I think the deck is cool. It's a scary deck now. I think it's a legitimately solid deck that can beat interactions going first. It still has enough play uh, space in the deck to play like going second stuff. And I do think it is a legitimate deck going forward. That being said, what it specifically pees me off about this new support is it's solid. X Cross Cannon, really, really good main deck engine card. And then two additional really good extra cards in Union Controller and XYZ Hyper Dragon Cannon. They really, really all help the deck specifically. There's other cards too that help, but these were like, to me, the three standout cards there. Now we need to go back. We need to go back. Structure deck, Seto Kaiba, and structure deck, uh, Yugi Moto. These structure deck release at the exact same time in Japan, June 18th, 2016. They were double released at the same time because Kaiba and Yugi are rivals in the anime, so it was like, pick your favorite, and you could get new cards for some of their strategies, except they kind of hone in on two specific ones. Kaiba's structure deck was based on the Union cards, the ABC cards, giving them more cards. That's where they got uh, some of their... Uh, you know, centerpieces being uh, ABC Dragon Buster, a phenomenal boss monster, even for today's standards. Uh, it's a solid interruption, easy to summon. It's, it hits like all three points you want in a boss monster. Easy to summon, solid interruption, and gets you a good, solid amount of follow-up. A really strong amount of follow-up, even to this day. You get Union Hanger. You get a field spell that adds consistency and is a one-card play for the deck. Awesome. One of the best cards in the deck. Uh, really, really good centerpiece, especially since at the time this came out, we still had three terraforming, I believe. So extra, extra consistent for sure, just on the fact that it is a, uh, a field spell. So that then takes us over to Yugi structure deck. I guess before we go to Yugi, I should also mention that ABCs basically on release were like immediately competitive and then stayed at least at, at like, well, I guess at worst high rogue level for years. This is late, to, this is mid 2016. Probably through 2020? Like, I feel like we even saw ABC topping during, like, toss format. Or maybe just before toss format. So you could say three years, right? Through Zodiac format. ABC's legitimately competed with Zodiac. Some people even played both in the same deck at times. Legitimately powerful cards. Um, really. Um, so, yeah. Like, it, it just, it hit hard. It was very successful. A lot of people were into it. That takes us to Yugi's structure deck. You know? the main character, like the number one most well-known character from your entire franchise who got a new structure deck supporting one of his beloved archetypes of cards he plays, Magnet Warriors, and it was terrible. They released these side-by-side, -side. ABCs were immediately meta, and then they released these. This is their boss monster, Turds, compared to ABC Dragon Buster. They also released this fusion boss monster. By the way, this is a fusion that does not contact fuse like ABC Dragon Buster does. It requires a fusion summon in a deck that literally has zero access to fusion summons. This deck had, has no access to performing a fusion summon. You just have to, I guess, hard draw polymerization. Not only that, his materials are your two main deck brick boss monsters that are not even good. Like You don't even really want to play them. But if you want to make this guy, you would have to play them. On top of that, he has a float effect that only summons those same two monsters from hand or deck, not graveyard. So if you use them as material to make him, they are in graveyard, which means if you want his float effect to work, you would have to have two more copies of these terrible bricky boss monsters in your main deck still. So you would have to play four copies of terrible bricks and need to hard draw or hard, like find polymerization the hard way just to even make this guy in the first place. He's terrible. He's a solid monster when he hits the field. He's just a negate. He's really big. That's pretty good just in and of itself. 
Barone, got Barone banned recently. Um, but this card is too hard to make. Doesn't float like ABC Dragon Buster reasonably, right? Like reasonably, you would never be willing to pay play that many bricks just to make his secondary effect live. Um, but he does have an interruption. But like he only hits one out of the three categories, so it's just not nearly good enough. Um, forcing you to play Valkyrian's terrible. We were looking for an excuse to not have to play this card basically by them revamping new cards. Berserkian is at most fine. At most fine, but he's not an interruption. He only pops cards. And just even summon him, you banish all your Magnet Warriors from Grave anyway, and he needs to banish other Magnet Warriors from Grave to pop cards. So sometimes you don't even have material to pop cards at that point. It's brutal. And it's such a shame, too, because the small Magnet Warriors, the Electro Magnet Warriors, those are actually good cards. Alpha, Beta, and Gamma are all decent cards. They just don't have the cards around them to really facilitate anything meaningful. Over the years, they've gotten a couple cards, like Magnet Induction, I think, is a decent card. It's not perfect, but it is decent. Just target... If you control a Magnet Warrior, you can just summon another Magnet Warrior from deck with a different name. Um, pretty good, and then it also acts as, like, a Baylinx Engrave. So, decent card, uh, but also, even though the deck has, like, five Magnet Spells and Traps, the deck has no way to search any Magnet cards. So, you just have to hard draw them, I guess. And uh, we also got a card like Epsilon. Like, these cards are solid cards that could be important engine cards if the deck actually, like, had anywhere to go with it. But the deck can't ac access any of its utility cards at will. It has to just hard open them. And they don't have a win condition they can get to reasonably and is impactful enough. And so they never took off even out the gate with their structure deck, right side by side with ABCs. ABCs immediately meta proficient, uh, and the Magnum Warriors, nothing. Didn't get support for a while, it got support over the last couple of years, like post-2020, they got like these two cards. It didn't really change anything, because the deck didn't have a win condition, and they got unsearchable engine guards that don't like that there's nothing that they could even get them to. They could be decent cards, they're just, they're not taking us anywhere right now. So, it's just upsetting that, like, I've already had this problem for a while, because I think even without this most recent set in the OCG, like, this has already been a problem, that they release these side by side, these are supposed to be the biggest rivalry of characters in the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! sphere uh, and lore, except... The guy who generally loses to Yugi, his archetype was meta, and now is getting a second chance. A whole other seven cards in a Duelist of Brilliance, in a, in a Duelist pack. That's almost as many as a full-on structure deck again. And Magnet Warriors have never even been rogue. Like, legitimately. It, it, it baffles me. It baffles me, because I feel like there is, there is something there. You know what I mean? If Konami, re if Konami put out the next core set and they wanted to throw Yugi on the cover with like a sweet new Magnet Warrior boss monster, I think that would be sweet. I think people would be into it as long as they make the support good and it, it actually makes the deck like decent. It doesn't have to be amazing, but if it's just decent, if it's playable, I think I think a lot of people go crazy for it because those are classic Yugi monsters. Everybody knows those cards. So it's just upsetting. Like, I like ABCs. I'm not mad they got support. I'm just mad they got another almost as many cards as a structure that gives you, which is basically... A structure is like the greatest thing that can happen to an archetype. Because eight new cards, they usually try to build a fully coherent strategy just from those eight cards on top of whatever else that archetype may already have. It's just one of the best things an archetype can get in terms of, like, you know, support in one wave. Um, and they're getting basically another one. And I'm not mad that they're getting it. I'm just mad that Magnet Warriors aren't also getting that treatment because I think they deserve it. But alas, that's how my rant goes. Uh, I don't really have much else to say here. I just need to get this off my chest. Peeves me off. I haven't talked about this in a while, but I do talk about it every once in a while on the channel. Um, when it starts bubbling up again and I just look at my old Magnet Warrior cards and I'm like, these cards have potential. They really do. But Konami doesn't care. So, there you go. That's where I'm at. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like Magnet Warriors? Do you not care? Do you like ABCs so much more than Magnet Warriors that you're like, who cares? <laughs> I like this one. I'm glad they got support. I don't care about that one. I don't care if they didn't get support. That's totally a fair take. But 
for someone who likes both and is just disappointed that they were supposed to be rivals, they came out at the same time, rivals in the show. Like, it just made sense that they should both be good. Why can't they both be good? I don't know. I'm out of here for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Let me know your thoughts down below on this rant in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.